Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Sunday Youth Bible Study. Glad to have you here with me, tuning in and uh, ready to study the Word of God and to get into it and uh, get something out of it. Um, today's the day that the Lord has made, right? So let's rejoice, be glad in it, and uh, start it off by getting into the Word of God. Whenever you're watching this, maybe you're not watching it at the beginning of the day. It's just the context for me because I'm I get up and I'm doing it. So. <laughs> Um, we're going to be studying in Ruth today. That's kind of the next stop in our curriculum. We're working our way through this. And um, it's just such an amazing story. I would, as always, encourage you to, um, we're not going to read the whole book. We're going to skip around through the whole book in order to get um, kind of a quick snapshot of the, the life of Ruth. And um, so I would encourage you to just read the whole book later. It's only four chapters. It's pretty quick to go through. And it's uh, such an amazing story with so much great example in it for us that I think that it would benefit you. Um, so, yeah, you should try that out. <laughs> um, let's just get into it. The scriptures are up there on the title. And uh, we're going to start with reading Ruth chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, and then uh, verses... 16 and 17. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab, where she had heard that the fields of Moab, she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you, grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. And she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. Dropping over to verse 16. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you, for where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge, for your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. <clears throat> so Naomi's sons had married Moabite women, and one of them was Ruth. Naomi's husband and two sons had died, leaving the three women as widows. When Naomi decided to return to Israel, Ruth had this life-altering decision that she had to make. Uh, was she going to stay in Moab or was she going to go with Naomi? Pretty important decision coming up. But as you see in our text that Ruth was clearly affected by her relationship with Naomi. And Naomi had clearly shared with Ruth um, God, the gospel. She had shown Ruth what it meant to know God. Because as you see in the text, when Ruth says that she is going to follow Naomi, she also declares that your God will be my God. She's not just declaring that she's going to follow Naomi. She's declaring that she's going to follow God. There's clearly um, been a transformation that's taken place in Ruth's life that is causing her to make the decisions that she is making. She wants to follow God. It was a lot like the decision Rahab made, like we studied a little while ago. Um, she wasn't choosing um, just simply one thing. She was choosing 
God. She wasn't just choosing to follow Naomi. She was choosing to follow God, as we said. <laughs> Even though she was a Moabite, she had turned to follow the God of Abraham. So at some point in our lives, as with Ruth, each person is going to need to take a look at where their faith is, at what their faith is in. They're going to have to consider who they belong to. So can you consider what your faith is in, who you belong to? Do you consider who you're going to follow. Do you notice when you're not necessarily following after Christ, but being led by something else? Remember in the end of Joshua, he said to the people, choose this day whom you will serve. The one that you follow is going to have your highest allegiance, right? Is that going to be Jesus or is it going to be something else? Here's the here's the real question. Is it something that you can admit when it is not Jesus that you are following? Is that something that you can see, identify, admit, and repent of? Is that something that you can fall on your face about and seek God's face about? Or are you afraid that God doesn't love you if you don't love him right? So if you admit that you clearly don't love him right and you're not seeking to follow after him, that you will have lost his love. Don't forget that it was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. God demonstrated that he loved us before we were ever considering changing sides from being enemies of God. That God demonstrated his love then. Admitting when God reveals to you sin in your life, being able to see that and admit that and confess that is not going to lose you God's love. That is how you walk in repentance. That is how you walk in his love. <clears throat> <clears throat> But following after God, following after who you are aligned to, Ruth had been um, saved, essentially, and she was going to follow after God. She was going to stay with Naomi, go with Naomi back to uh, her homeland, where she would be somewhat of a foreigner, or, I mean, completely a foreigner, um, because of the work that God had done in her, that she... Um, knew the right thing to do was to stay with Naomi and follow her and her God back to Israel. Let's read over Ruth chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, then 8 through 12. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him in whose sight I shall find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field that belonged to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. Drop down to verse 8. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field, or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field, that they are reaping, 
and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes, that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? But Boaz said to her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me, and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done, and a full reward be given to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. What an amazing account. Is there some language in there? Just a quick question. Is there some language in there that sounds familiar to you? Think forward to the New Testament. Is there some language in there that sounds familiar to you? She left her father and mother, her native land, and came to a people that she did not know before. Oftentimes, when God calls you to follow him, you will be called to walk away from the traditional values that your family might hold if they're not holding biblical, godly values. And you'll have to come away from all of that. Oftentimes, relationships can be... They can become more tense. <laughs> they can become, um, well, more tense. You can become enemies. You know, you hear Lynn say it. You hear God's word say it. That, uh, you know, the enemy, your enemies will be those of your own household. Um, and that's not, you know, if, if, if you're being led by godly parents, that's not going to happen. And um, most of you are absolutely blessed to have absolutely godly parents, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that we have in our church that um, so many godly parents are looking to God's word and, and looking to God's strength to, to raise their families. And so if that's, if that's you, take a minute to be grateful that, that God has seen fit to raise you like that. <laughs> Boaz, the son <clears throat> of Rahab, became a prominent man in Bethlehem. He's related to Naomi's husband, Elimelech. Ruth just so happened by God's hand. Nothing just so happens, right? We know that God is sovereign and he is in control. I mean, look at the lineage and the way things unfold. There's just absolutely no way that anything is accidental, right? Ruth happened to be gathering grain in the portion of the fields that belonged to Boaz. Boaz was a generous and hospitable man, and Ruth was free to gather grain in his field and to drink his water. He, uh, you know, essentially told her to make herself at home. She was so very welcome. <clears throat> he demonstrated um, a great deal of love and care uh, through protection for her. She was uh, safe on his property. She wouldn't be harmed in any way while she was in Boaz's field with his people. She could trust in his protection for her, in his care for her. So word of Ruth's commitment to Naomi had gotten around, and Ruth's reputation preceded her in the best of ways. Um, she was the kind of person who remained above reproach. She was submitted to God's will. She was submitted to God's authority. And she trusted him with her life, and she trusted him with her future. She trusted him with her dreams. She trusted everything she had to God's plans, to whatever God's plan was for her. 
if we are in Christ, we are a new creation. The old is gone. There is no background like being a Moabite or no troubled past. Uh, you know, she was a widow. There's nothing that is going to keep us from the love of Christ. There's nothing um, There's nothing that will keep us out of the love of Christ. I don't know how else to say it. She was a new creation. And people could see that. People could see that. People knew that she, they, they, they knew the, the character of Ruth. Let's read over Ruth chapter 4, verses 9 through 17. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, You are witnesses this day that I have bought from the hand of Naomi all that belonged to Elimelech and all that belonged to Chilion and Malon. Also Ruth the Moabite, the widow of Malon, I have bought to be my wife, to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brothers and from the gate <clears throat> of his native place. You are witnesses this day. Then all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, you are, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you act worthily in Ephratath and be renowned in Bethlehem. And may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore Judah, because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, for he has not left you this day without a Redeemer. And may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher in your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name saying, a son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. So in chapter 3, Naomi desired for Ruth to remarry uh, because she loved Ruth. She instructed Ruth to uh, propose to Boaz, which she did. But there was a relative who was first in line to marry Ruth, and Boaz promised to marry Ruth if the other relative wouldn't. So Boaz went to the city gate and told the relative that Naomi was selling the field of Elimelech, but buying it would include the acquisition of Ruth as well. So this is no small request, uh, since by law the relative would have been required to give Elimelech heirs through Ruth and provide them with an inheritance. He didn't want to take on that kind of obligation, and so he refused. But Boaz stepped up to marry Ruth. He took responsibility for Ruth and for Naomi's welfare. So Boaz had to buy the field and take Ruth as his wife and provide for an heir. Boaz was willing to pay this price. Boaz redeemed Ruth and Naomi. He paid the cost and purchased them. They were foreigners. He took them in. He is a picture of Christ. Hope you guys are seeing that. Boaz is, you know, he points us to Jesus. 
Jesus, the one who loved us enough and took responsibility for our redemption, just like the plan always was. He bought us back and he paid the ultimate price to redeem his bride, the church. Boaz paid a great price to redeem his bride, right? That's what we're looking at. <clears throat> the, uh, the promise of a Messiah was given to the line of Judah, and at this point in Israel's history, at the time of the judges, that promise had seemed uh, possibly all but forgotten. Israel was occupied by the Philistines. They were far from God, and we know that that was um, <laughs> greatly due to their disobedience and desire to chase after their own idols and do their own thing. Uh, but God had not forgotten or abandoned his promise uh, in the town of Bethlehem. He was continuing his plan. Boaz, the descendant of Judah, fathered Obed. Obed fathered Jesse. Jesse fathered David. So in this way, Obed continues the messianic line that leads to Jesus. God does not forget his people. The plan was always that Jesus would come and redeem us and pay for our sins through his death on the cross, that he died for our sins, that he died for our sins, that he was buried and that he was raised. So will we, like Ruth, make the kind of God granted declaration that we will go where he goes, live where he lives, that we would give up our hopes and our dreams in favor of what God has planned for us, that we want to be with God so much so that we would pray that our dreams would become what God wants them to be. That's it for this week, guys. I'll be praying for you, and I will catch you next week.